It's all about Jesus and the good things he's done. Good evening, everyone. This is Jerry and Barbara Seymour, and we are so privileged to be here teaching tonight on John chapter 14. We're excited that each of you have joined us. We ask you to open your Bible to John, fourth book in, in the New Testament, and we will start verse one of chapter four, 14 in just a minute. But we're going to talk about the peace of God. We're going to talk about the peace that Jesus left us. See, Jesus did not have an inheritance to leave us, to leave his disciples. He didn't have a fortune to leave his disciples in the last will and testament. But Jesus gave us two things greater than any fortune. It, money can't buy what Jesus left us. Two things he left. He left us the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. He said, and I leave with you my peace, the peace of Jesus himself. This is the peace of the Son of God. His complete trust in the love of his Father and our Father, Father God. So that's where we're going to start out tonight, talking about peace. I'm going to read John chapter 14, verse 1. We'll start there in just a minute. So open your Bible. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Holy Spirit, we love you. We thank you. We receive you right now. We receive you. We declare that we are desperately aware of our need for more of you. We desperately understand the word of God more clearly. Or plainly, obviously, than ever before. I ask you now, Holy Spirit, to come and put Jerry and Barbara on. Put us on and wear us like a coat. That we might deliver the word of God clearly, concisely, precisely. That each one will be able to receive and understand and grab a hold to this. And it may go and plant deep in each of our hearts. Father, may we be able to convey it to them like you conveyed it to us. And we, we, will you please enable us? Put us on. We receive you. Holy Spirit, Son of God, Jesus, come. Father, come right Amen. now. In Jesus' name, amen. James, why don't you read for us uh, John chapter 14, verses 1 through 4, please. Um, the, way, the way to the Father. Um, don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not, if were not, if, <clears throat> if it were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? If I go away and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself so that where I am, I am, you may, you may be also. <clears throat> you know the way to where I am going. Thank you. So here we read that the first thing that Jesus tells the disciples here is let not your heart be troubled. So, we got to understand where they were when this passage was written, okay? They had just finished the Last Supper. Judas had just left. Jesus had just got through washing the disciples' feet. And this was the last conversation before they went to Gethsemane. So, Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Because in my Father's house are many mansions, are many rooms. And 
they understood this. They had a concept of this. And he said, if this were not so, I would have told you, but mm -hmm. I go to prepare a place for you. They already had an idea and he was confirming in them that this was absolutely true. And if I go away, oh, by the way, I'm going away. If I go away, I will come again. So these instructions were, were to the disciples at the end of supper, just before they, the 12 of them, since Judas wasn't with them, the 12 of them went to the Garden of Gethsemane. These were the last, some of the last words. These, this chapter 14 and chapter 15 occurred as they were walking toward Gethsemane or <clears throat> shortly in that time period. The very last verse, if you look um, at the very last verse of chapter 14, Thank you. it says, and they arise, let us go from here. So this whole chapter, whether we get through it tonight or not, this whole chapter we have to remember was in the upper room at the end of the Passover feast. Okay. So the next thing that happened was Gethsemane. And these were comforting words. These were words to a group of troubled men. And Jesus knew that they were troubled and the trouble and the sorrow was fixing to increase dramatically. Oh, what did Jesus say? Let not your hearts be troubled. Peace, peace unto you. Say. It doesn't, it doesn't say peace. It doesn't say peace. Okay, <laughs> keep going. Okay, Barbara, are you ready to read? For, uh, April, thanks for joining us. We're in John chapter 14. And Miss Barbara Moore is going to pick up reading verse seven, uh, 5 through 7. And Charles, go right behind her with 8 through 11. Thank you. Uh, no. Okay. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Um, verse five. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. And how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my father also, and from now on, you know him and have seen him. <laughs> you want Charles to read? Please. Please. Um, Charles. Eight, eight through 11, Charles. All right. Philip said, Lord, show us the father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, <coughs> Philip? Even after I've been among you, such a long time. Everyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing, doing his work. Believe me, when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the work in myself. Right. Thank you. Praise so, the Lord. So we see that in verse, verse 1, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. And then he goes on and elaborates on that. Um, and expresses the unity of the Son of God and God himself. They are, they are one. They are completely in sync with one another. And if you've seen one, you've seen the other. If you believe in one, you believe in the other. And this is necessary to believe in God and the deity of Christ to believe that there is a heaven, that heaven is exist this place heaven is a real place 
Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. Comforting words. It's not a figment of our imagination. It is a real place. And, and it has existed before the earth existed. And we must believe that Jesus is the son of God. And God is in Jesus. If we, will, if we are to believe that heaven exists. Because right. the word of God in uh, Isaiah 61, 1 through 8, Isaiah said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And a seraphim went and took a coal from the altar and touched his lips. You see, Isaiah in the Old Testament got a revelation of heaven. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 through 4. Paul had revelation of heaven. Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 through 12. John was called away into heaven. Hebrews 11, chapter 10, and verse 16 says, there, it is, there is a city whose maker and builder is God, and it is a better and, and higher and more beautiful heavenly country. 1 Kings 8, verse 23, says that heaven is above the earth. It is superior to the earth. It is above. Matthew 6, Matthew 5, 16, and 34. Heaven is God's dwelling place, and there he sits on his throne. We have to understand that heaven is our home. Heaven is where we're going. Yes, we are praying, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But that's where we're going. That's where our sure. hope, that's where our reward is. And God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And that's where our reward, that's where eternity, that's where we will spend eternity. Because heaven is prepared for the saints. Hey, can, can I see some things before we get? Off of I just want, I just want to I want <laughs> y'all to get excited and see that heaven is a real place. Yes, it existed before Earth existed. It will exist after Earth exists. Just because it is in the spirit world, it actually is has greater reality than what we see and feel right now because everything that we see and feel will pass away. But things in the eternal will never pass away. That's why they call him eternal. Imagine that. <laughs> well, I wanted to bring out a few things before we get too far down into the chapter. Um, in five little things, Things And if you've got pen and paper, I want you to write these down because these are the things that jumped out to me in these first 11 chapters or 11 verses. First is trust. We have to trust in God. It will help our hearts. It will help our minds. It will help our spirits. We must trust. Yeah. And then... We have to believe. We have to believe in God. We have to believe in Jesus. We have to believe in the Holy Spirit. And Jesus says, you know. Jesus told us. Number three is, you know. No. We were in a car once, James, bringing some guys from Denver back from the airport to our house to go to the revival. And one of the young men we had not um, met before, and the other two had been here several times, and we were in the car, and they were asking us things about the area, different things, about just, you know, the different economy, different mm -hmm. things about the area. And Jerry was driving, so I was answering most of the questions, and I kept saying, uh, I think this is, but I really don't know for sure. And that was my pet answer. It asked us non-committal. I was non-committal. I didn't want to over-exaggerate. 
And I didn't have it off the top of my head. They were out asking you real estate questions. And a lot of real, yeah, a lot economy. of economy, economy, real estate questions, how the market was and different things. And I kept saying, I'm not sure. I really don't know. Well, this young man all the way in the back of our car says, well, Barbara, what do you know? Come on. <laughs> and it kind of caught me off guard at first. And I said, I know I'm Gary's wife. I know he loves me. I know Jesus loves me. And I know I'm going to heaven. There you that go. I know for sure. <laughs> yeah. And so Jesus here told them in verse four, and you know the way to where I'm going. You know. Hallelujah. Come on. You know, if you know Jesus, he goes on to, to say to Thomas or some scriptures say Thaddeus, mm -hmm. if you in verse seven. If you had really known me, you would know who my father is. Now, there's people in the world that know about Jesus. Come on. And know about God. And then there's people that know him like. Intimate. Yes. Like I know Jerry. Mm -hmm. I know everything about it. I can read his mind almost. We, we have these little times in our life that we go. Uh, I bet I can tell you what you're thinking right now. And then she goes ahead and says it out loud. After 43 years of walking, living, married to him, that should happen. Right. That sh that should be an outcome of that relationship. Is that right, Miss Barbara? Thumbs up. <clears throat> Sometimes you can read his mind. <clears throat> so that's the way our relationship <laughs> should be with the Lord. Had we really known me, Jesus said, you would know father. my father. So do you really know Jesus or does he have to, if you have not really known me, at least know me, Jesus, I'm talking about, know him by his works. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. So this is what, this is the knowing. Jesus said, you really do know. Just stop and think a minute. You really do know that number four, the way we know the way, because we know Jesus. His way. In verse six, Jesus says, I am the way. We know the way, we know the truth, and we know the life. So that's number four. Those are the three things Jesus said. You know that. If you know me, you know these things. You should not have to question that. And then number five, Come on. what more do we need to believe? That was, a, that was almost a question that Jesus says in response. What more do I have to do for you to believe, for you to believe? You've been with me so long. What you, else? Yes. Uh, verse nine. Verse nine. Yes, I have... Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am? Oh, my goodness. You know, don't let that be the question that you're asked the day you get to heaven. <laughs> that would not be a good stance in front of the throne of God for him to say, I've been with you this long and you still don't know who I am. That would not be a good day. You want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's yeah. what you want to hear. Right. So Jesus, Jesus' love is so big. He is so broad. You know, you hear teaching about the way being narrow. Narrow is the way. Few there be that find it. Few there be that find it. But yet, if we really look at Jesus's love, his love is so big that the whole world can get there. Mm -hmm. If you're having a hard time with the way to Jesus being the way to the father, then look at it as religion rules. The law puts restraints on the way. That's right. Jesus doesn't put restraints on the way. He opens the way up for all to come to the Father. And enables us to walk that way. Yes. The Holy Spirit. But religion and rules and the law restraints on us and, and makes us feel like we're going through this 
in there a little tunnel that, oh, I, I've got to be able to fit through. I can't raise it up any higher. So um, just be aware that if you're feeling that way in your relationship with the Lord, that it's tight, that it's hard, it's that it is ill-fitting uh -huh. and restraining, that religion is putting that on you, not Jesus. Now, the other thing I want to point out here before we get too far down in the chapter is verse 5 and 6. We've looked at it a little bit already. Verse 5 and 6. Um, 5 is Thomas asking the father, we have no idea where you are going. So how do we know the way? And Jesus says to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the father except through me. This, you can... Make a star, put a sticky note. This is the most basic, but yet the most important scriptures of the whole text in the Bible. This is the gospel oh, right yeah. there. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am going to my father, but Thomas says, we don't know where you're going. Jesus said, it's all in me. Just follow me. In I'm Christ. the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. And it's the unit. It's uniting our life with Jesus and trusting him that will take us to the father. When we're united with Christ, in when Christ. we're one in Christ, when we're in Jesus, unite in trusting him with our lives, we can believe with a whole heart that he will take us to the father. He, he takes us nowhere else. He cannot lead us anywhere else but to the Father. Right. That's the only place he's ever been. That's the only place he's going back to. Right. And when he comes back to get us, the only place he will take us is back to the Father. That is reassuring. That brings comfort to my troubled heart when we go through stuff in this world and our heart gets troubled about what is tomorrow going to bring. All I have to do is stop and think, Jesus is going to take me to the Father. Be it here right now in this life through prayer mm -hmm. or when he returns in glory to catch us away. Or if it's through death even, I will go back to the Father. That's the only place my trust and my belief in Jesus will ever take me. It won't take me anyplace else but to the Father. That's good preaching right there. That is <laughs> good, good preaching. So if you download the notes that, uh, Pastor, absolutely, Pastor Nate uh, I that. gave, the first line on it is B-I-B-L-E. It says, basic instructions before leaving earth. B-I-B-L-E. Basic instructions before leaving earth. And that's what we're talking about. These are the things we have to get right. If we want to make heaven our home, we have to understand that Jesus is the only way, the only truth, and the only life, and the only way to get to God is through Jesus in Christ, we can be in God. So this is how it's done. This is basic instructions. Open your Bible. This is it right here. Bas basic instructions before leaving earth. I don't know where I got that from, but it's a, I heard that a long time ago. A long time ago. Like second chapter of Acts, a singing group back in the mid-80s, I think. <clears throat> All well, right. I, I, I'm not through here. You ain't through? I'm not through Go here. on and preach. Ain't nobody leaving. Come on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Joseph, if you'll unmute your mic and read for us John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Said, sure. Um, let's see. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Come on. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Amen. Very Amen. Good. That is Jesus. Jesus. That is the description of Jesus. In these Verses, um, verses 9 through 11 here in the book of John that um, Charles read for us in chapter 14. 
it talks about how the Father and, the, and Jesus are one. Absolutely. Well, I want to also incorporate in that oneness Holy Spirit. Right. So we have a, a triune God, a trinity, where the three of them are one. They cannot be separated. And, I, and the humanity and the deity of Jesus has to be fully encapsulated. Um, Melissa, if you're there, I'm ready for Colossians. If you're not there, I've got it in a I, I want it read in this translation. Okay. If you're going to read. read it. Go right ahead. Write this down if you can't find it real quick. Uh, All right. Give me one second. Colossians 1. Colossians is one of the epistles that was written by the Apostle Paul. It's back four or five books from where John is, if you don't know where that is. It's Colossians uh, uh, chapter 1, verse 15 through 20 is what Melissa is going to read. And this I'm, is... How, yeah. You got it? No, I'm not finding it fast enough. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and read it, okay? Okay. Listen to these words, because this is a explanation of the unity of Jesus and God and Holy Spirit and how there's nothing that can be existing if it was not for them. Mm -hmm. Just like Joseph read in John chapter one, the word was God, the word was with God. So there verse was nothing that was made that has been made except through God. Yes. Christ is the visible image of the in invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else, and he holds all creation together. He holds all creation together. He is the nuclear power that holds molecules together. He's the gravity that holds us to earth. He is. He is what holds all things together. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning, supreme over all who raised from the dead. He, so he is first in everything. Catch this. Y'all listening? For God, verse 19, for God in, in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by, by means. means of Christ's blood on the cross. God, the holy, omnipotent, invisible God, was totally encapsulated in the body of Jesus Christ. When he came to earth. And he was pleased for that. And he was so happy to do it. He was so happy to do it. So in these verses in okay. John 14. Y'all need to write that down. Colossians. 1. 15 through 20. 15 through 23. Actually is how far I read. <clears throat> but in a triangle. I'm not doing that very well. But in a triangle. There's three points. In a triangle, right? If you drew a circle in a triangle and then drew lines through the circles, no matter how you draw those lines connecting those circles, you cannot go anywhere but to the circles. And that's how the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit they overlap. are all connected. They're overlapping. You cannot go to one circle without going to another circle. 
within that triangle. And Jesus is God. God is Jesus. This may be elementary. You may say, Barbara, we got this. But no, this is so elementary. It's mind blowing. It's fundamental. But it, it is, it, it, it is, it's not so much elementary, but it is foundational that we have to have this yes. understanding that Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit are one, and they share a unity between the three of them, and you can't separate that unity. And we have to believe it. We have to believe it. If we don't believe that Jesus is God in the flesh and the Holy Spirit is what came to earth after Jesus was ascended, then we then our faith is is hallow. We don't we, we'll we've, never got have, a, we've got a hole in our faith. We don't have access to heaven. That's right. We don't have access. You don't you have to believe that heaven exists. And to do that, you have to understand the deity and the relationship of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. So back to our text, they had been walking with Jesus for three years. In verses 9 through 11, Jesus, after three years of the disciples walking with him, Jesus is still saying to them, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I am in the Father. The Father is in me. And so we take this now in the 21st century. We've not seen Jesus walk the earth. No. We've not seen God come down in flesh. Right. And we've not seen the Holy Spirit to be able to touch him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So do we believe? Ooh, she's preaching. Do we believe? And if, it, if we don't believe, we have a hole in our faith because we have to believe in the deity of Jesus Christ. I believe that we've got a president in the United States, but I've never seen him, never talked to him, never shook his hand, but I believe he's there. Mm -hmm. I believe the rocket ship went off from Cape Canaveral and went up to space, went to the moon, but I wasn't there. I didn't get to watch it take off. A lot of places that we but, just saw out, out in uh, uh, the West sure looked like that uh, moonscape. <laughs> but yet, we believe that it happened. If we can believe the things that we hear right. in the natural that truly did happen, but we didn't see it, touch it, smell it, feel it, can we believe that Jesus is in the Father, and the Father in him, and the Holy Spirit in us? Amen. Amen. That's good preaching right there. That is good preaching. Are we worried for verse 15? I think so. Okay. Uh, if, uh, Alexa, Alexis, <clears throat> Alexis, if you'll read 14, John 14, 12 through 18. John 14 through 18? Uh, verse 12, John 4, chapter 14, verse 12 through verse 18. Okay. I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Jesus promise, promises the Holy Spirit, if you love me, obey my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Thank you. Very Amen. good. So Jesus said, assuredly, truly, truly, heads up, guys. I'm telling you the truth. I've never told you a lie before. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He who believes, He's unable he can't lie. lie. He had never told him a lie. But he said, truly, truly, I tell you. <laughs> He's putting emphasis on this. The works that I do, he that believes in me will do 
these works and greater than these will he do because I go to the Father. How in the world is that possible? That greater works shall a man do than what Jesus did. Well, Acts 2, on the day of Pentecost, in one day, 3,000 accepted Jesus. In one day, they exceeded the, the salvations and the people that were following Jesus. Right after they received the Holy Spirit, they outdid the works of Jesus as far as salvations are concerned. Okay? So we are doing greater things. We are doing it. The word of God is going forth at a faster, greater rate with more revelation than they had then. Verse 13, and whatever you ask in my name. Hallelujah. What a promise. As long as we are in Christ and believe that we're in Father, as long as we're in the Holy Spirit, we can ask in his name, and he will do what we ask according to his will, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Will this glorify the Father? Will the Son be glorified in this? You have the right to ask. And it is according, is it according to the spirit of truth? Right. Okay. What we have to wrap our brain around when we do this scripture, when we stand on this scripture, which this is, scripture has been used a whole lot throughout the generations and the centuries, is one, we have to pray according to will, right. God's will, like Jerry said, but then we have to wait for God's timing of that will to come to pass. Mm -hmm. And that's where, at the beginning, we have to trust. Don't let your heart be troubled because your prayers haven't been answered. Don't let your hearts be troubled because your prayers haven't been answered. If they're according to the God's will, you know that you have and the you will of God. ask in Jesus' name, they will be answered. What we don't know is God's timing. But he's perfect. His timing is as perfect as his word is. His timing is as perfect as his promises are. We just have to rest and trust in the timing of the Father. <laughs> Verse 14, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Hallelujah, what a promise. We have not because we ask not. If we don't go to the Father and make our petitions known before him, how do we expect to him to to fulfill our needs and our, our requests, he said, ask. If you ask. Didn't say if you think about it. Didn't say if you write it down on a piece of paper. Said if you ask. Takes me back to Genesis chapter 1. It said, Jesus, God said, let there be. He said. He said. It came out of his mouth. He verbalized it. If you ask anything in my name, whatever, see verse 13, whatever you ask in my name, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. It's our responsibility, our privilege, and our responsibility to make our petitions known to the Father through the name and in the name of Jesus, the finished work of Christ on the cross. I come and make my petitions known before the Father. All right. Amen. Verse 15. Boldly come before the throne of God. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me. Should that say since you love me? Could. It is a. Because he's talking to those who, who have said. acknowledged mm -hmm. their love for him mm -hmm. already. Since you love me. The byproduct of your love is keeping my commandments. Yes. And what is the commandments of God? I am the way, the truth, and the life. The, the Christian walk was originally called, not called Christians. They were called people of the way. What in, way? In Acts, it was, 
They were called the way. People of the way. Mm -hmm. What way? The way of Jesus. It, it wasn't until they got to Antioch that they were called Christians. But here Jesus says, I am the way. And if you love me, you will keep my commandments, which is my way of doing things. I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another helper, a comforter, that he may abide. Oh, my gracious. Here John introduces a word that we're going to get into next chapter, chapter 15, abide. One of Jerry's favorite words. In the scripture, one of my favorite words is abide, to, to live inside of, to have that as your home, as your residence, as your foundation, as your, at where you, or your fortification, that's where you abide. That's where you have your children. That's where you, you, you come and lay your head down at night. That's where you abide. That's where you find peace. That's where peace exists is, he said, I will pray the father and he will give you another comforter. The word there. A helper, and it is the one who takes the children to school, the one who walks beside the children and takes them to school and explains on the way to school what Gamaliel and what the, the teachers were teaching the children in the synagogue. And then on the way home, they made sure the kids came straight home. That Paracletos was the one who walked alongside, who taught and revealed the truth that was taught to them get a chance to look up and understand this Greek word is describing uh, a, a person. It's actually describing a person in Roman culture called a parakletos. And it is a, it's a beautiful, beautiful revelation and comparison to how the Holy Spirit works in our lives. He reveals truth. Okay. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay. All right. Uh, the truth, verse 17, the, the spirit of the truth. He will abide in you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth mm -hmm. that the world cannot receive because it doesn't receive me. But you can receive it because he dwells in you and will be in you. There it is, that abiding, that dwelling. Verse 18, I will not leave you as orphans. I will not abandon you. I will come back for you and receive you unto myself, that where I am, you may be also. All right? Verse 19, how much time we got? We're doing good. 10 minutes. No one's assigned to 19. A, Go ahead. A little while longer, the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live, you will live also. At that day, you will know that I am in my father and you in me and I in you. Jerry's reading John 14 um, verses 19, 20, 20. and, oh, not 21. No. Okay. So we see that there, there is a very short period that Jesus said, the world will no, will no longer be able to see me, but you see me. <clears throat> and because I live, you will live also. So we have the hope of the resurrection right there. If, if we die before the rapture of the church, we know that we will live again because Jesus said, because I live, you will also live. This proves that there is life after death and that we will be with him this concept that once a person dies that's the end and you return to mother earth and and there is no spirit well jesus says right here because i live you will live also at that day you will know at that day when we stand in our eternal bodies in his presence, he said, you will know that I am in the Father, you are in me, and I am in you. 
there we go back to the the trinity and being us being in the center of this triangle where all three are overlapping in the center of this and that is where we are we are in god we're in christ the holy spirit is in us so there is a a, a, a continuous overlapping of the relationship here that God has with himself and now we have with God because Christ made the way and he is the truth and he is the light and therefore we can come to the Father through Christ. Verse 21, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. Now, Judas, it says in my Bible, who's also called Thaddeus, asked Jesus, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and be within us and not to the world? And Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. All right. If you look at the notes on the second page of the notes, verse 20, uh, 22 through 24. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. This is answering uh, Thaddeus' question. Jesus repeats the theme of the previous verses. Jesus would uh, be revealed to and be among the disciples through and operating in love. Expect them to operate in love and obedience and unity with the Father. Jesus is not teaching uh, of some mystic experience, but this is a real life living out God in the presence, in our presence, and the working of the Holy Spirit. This is a personal walking out life with God. His disciples, we as his disciples, would demonstrate a reverent regard for Jesus' teaching. Jesus said, he who loves me will keep my word, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my word. Mm -hmm. And this is the way of life. <clears throat> his word is the way of life. Jesus said, I am the way. He's telling us, this is the basic instructions before leaving earth. You will know my word. You will love my commandments and you will keep my commandments. If you love me, a byproduct of you loving me is keeping my commandments. Therefore, you can walk in the way as I am in the way. And in that relationship, Jesus is the door into relationship with God. And through this relationship, God's house is open for us as we love God. Well, where's God's house? Why don't you look at verse 2. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you so. But I go to prepare a place to you. How do we get there? The there disciples Jesus. asked. He said, the way. How do we know the way? We study Jesus. We understand his teaching. We understand that by obeying his commandments, we have the way of Christ shown to us. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him. Okay. Yes. Okay. We saw this lived out in our lives. One of the best and easiest way to bless a parent to bless Father God is to bless the child, even though the giver of the blessing doesn't even have a relationship with a parent. So someone came and wanted to, to bless one of our sons, and they, they poured out blessing on one of our sons. In doing so, it brought tremendous joy and gratification to us. It was a blessing to us, even though we didn't have a relationship with the, with the giver of the blessing, mm -hmm. we received blessing. Jesus says right here, 
My father is blessed when you keep my commandments. If anyone, when a child is blessed, joy comes to the child and to the parent. Because from birth of that child, the parent has been focused on that child's well-being. Now, someone comes along and sees value and confirms that value in the child with a blessing. The joy of seeing your child blessed by someone else is tremendous. In contrast, don't even, th don't, don't even think about talking bad about uh, one of Barbara's sons. You don't want to see the wrath of a mad mama when you just think about talking bad about one of the boys. So, regarding the word of Christ, by living the word of God, and he instructs us, Father God is blessed. And what happens? He turns his face towards us. Mm -hmm. When we bless Jesus, when we live in the commandments of, the, of Jesus, it blesses the Father. And he turns his face towards us. And when he turns his face, he opens the door into his house. That's good. Is that not what we want? This is how it's done. He said, we will come in and make our home with him. You see that in verse 23? That's the same Greek word that we see in verse 2. In my father's house are many rooms. We will move in, Father, Holy Spirit, and Son. We will move in, establish, not leaving. Coming to stay, abide. Love Jesus. Keep his word. Living, pleasing to him. <clears throat> Making room in your home for Jesus. Mm -hmm. How many times have we opened the door and welcomed guests in their home and say, make yourself at home? Can we do that? with the Holy Spirit. Can we open the door and say, make yourself at home? In other words, if there's something here that you don't like, just let me know, I'll take care of it. If it's, if it's, is it too hot in here? We'll take care of it. Oh, do you want some water? Do you, how can, here, 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 hey, sit right here. Let me get, uh, here, prop your feet up. Take your shoes off. Make yourself at home. Is there anything in my life? Come, make yourself at home. Is there anything that you don't like? There's no rooms in the house that we go and shut the door and say, uh, you can't go in that room. That room is the junk room. You can't go in that room. Or you can't go in the master bathroom. No, Jesus and the Holy Spirit are welcomed in all the rooms, all the closets all the drawers, anywhere, because he's at home. Can we make him feel at home in our home, in our life, where we dwell? Jesus said it this way. This was his attitude. Not my will, but thy will be done, Father. Don't you want what Jesus says in verse 25 and 26? Look at verse 25 and 26. Um, I wasn't through there, by the way. Oh, that was an awful long period. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> verse 25 says, I am telling you these things now while I am still with you. But when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and remind you of everything I have told you. Don't you want the Holy Spirit to come and be with you and remind you of everything that Jesus has ever told you Hallelujah. or that Father has ever told you? Hallelujah. How do you think we do these Bible studies? How do we how do you think that we prepare and know it's Holy Spirit? Yes, yes. Holy Spirit bringing it to our remembrance. Bringing it back to our remembrance. It's bring it's being shared for the first time, whatever the case may be. <laughs> but 
the Holy Spirit, the representative of the Father, the advocate, is reminding us and teaching us teaching everything. Us. And he will do the same for you. He's no respecter of persons. As you read, as you study, Holy Spirit will tell you everything that you need to know and will remind you of everything that he's told you. Read verse 27. Verse 27. I am leaving you with a gift. I got a gift tonight from a friend. It was so special. I went to dinner before class with a friend, just me and her, and she gave me a gift, and I was so surprised. And here Jesus says, I'm leaving you a gift too. So I got two gifts tonight, <laughs> one from my friend and one from Jesus. Peace of mind and peace of heart. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Peace of my, I am leaving you with a gift. Peace of mind and peace of heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Remember what I told you. I'm going away but I will come back for you again. Okay. So my Bible says, peace, I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give. And he repeats the first verse. Let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. See, Jesus knew the trouble and the the pain that these guys were fixing to feel. He knew the agony that they would feel, but he said, peace. And in the Bible, in, in Hebrew, the word is translated shalom, and it means nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing out of place. But today, in our vernacular, it means Everything that makes for our highest good. Everything that makes our highest good. It is a life. This is what peace means? In this our is peace. Vernacular today? Mm -hmm. Okay. It is a life where there is nothing missing that is needed to live the fullness of God's plan for our life. Peace. This is incorporated in the word shalom. There's nothing missing that is needed for the fullness of God's plan. And then where everything is needed, is in place, and is working, there's nothing broken, there's nothing worn out, it is all working. And there's nothing out of place. Everything is in its proper position and has its proper assigned value as in priority. A place and an existence in God where all things are working in synergistic power to accomplish the full book of our life that we agreed on. This is shalom. This does not mean that we have absence of trouble. See, in contrast, the, the peace that the world gives says, we offer you the peace of escape, the peace <laughs> that comes from the avoidance of trouble, <clears throat> the refusal to face those things that are literally staring you in the face. This is described by William Barclay. The peace of this world is often based on distraction or deliberate blindness, a life that is trying to avoid the lies that is staring us in the face. And Jesus offers us a better peace, a real peace, a peace for his best plan, exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can think or ask. A peace where his best plan is being, we have the opportunity to live out this in our lives. And Jesus says at the beginning, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe in also in me. I'm leaving you my peace. He, Jesus was the prince of peace, according to Isaiah. Mm -hmm. The prince of peace. He came that we might have peace 
with the Father. He came to put division in the earth, but he came to bring peace between us and the Father. And here he says that if you have peace, it will displace the sorrow. It will displace the agony. It, it will give you the ability to trust and believe that God has a plan that is better and bigger than anything I have. We will come and make our home with you. There are many rooms. There, are, there is a way that through this attitude, this attitude of peace, that we can know that the Father loves us. And God has a plan for us, a plan to bless us and not to harm us. And we can trust and believe that it's going to work out. All things work Amen. together for good to them that love God and who are called according to his purpose. Now, right now, all we can see is earth. Right now, all we can see is the leaves on the trees and the garbage needs to be taken out. But there is something bigger than that. And it is the peace of God that passes all understanding. It is a relationship. It is the way. It is the truth. It is the life. And there is hope. There is encouragement. Jesus said, I go to the Father. I prepare a place. I will come again and get you. And I will bring you unto myself. First Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18 says, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Namusa was going to read that. It's too late. It's too late. Okay. But I just want you to, to get a grip on a peace that Jesus gives us. It's, yes. not a, it's not a piece of avoidance. It's not a, a piece of ignoring the trouble. It's a, it's a piece that we can come to the Father and know that those things that we bring to him, he addresses. And he gives us peace until the situation changes. Yes. If the situation doesn't change, we're going to heaven. We're going to heaven. Yes. We have to believe there is a heaven and there is a hell. And God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we just wanted y'all to, to understand that the inheritance that Jesus left us is greater than any money, more precious than any piece of land. It's more precious than silver or gold because all these things will pass away. But the peace of God and the peace of of Jesus operating in the faith of Jesus. Galatians 2.20, I close with this. Galatians 2.20 says, I am crucified with Christ, <laughs> nevertheless I live, yet not I, I but, but Christ, Christ liveth in me. In the, the life that, that I, I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. God. Who loved me and gave himself. Amen. The faith of the Son of God is where we have our trust and we anchor our hope and we pull on that anchor with all of our faith. Amen. That's basic instructions before leaving earth. Good teaching, guys. Raise your hand, y'all. Taking a deep breath. Just receive the peace of Jesus. Receive the peace of Jesus. Peace. My peace. Peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives, but the peace that passes all understanding will keep our hearts and our minds stayed on him. Father, we receive that peace from you this night right here, right now, each one of these precious people receive your peace. We trust you. We believe in you. We know you. And we know you're taking us to the Father. We lay our heads down at night in peace, knowing that there's nothing to be afraid of, no one to fear, no government or world can take us out of your hand. Thank you, Jesus. So we rest and we trust in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in your name. Yes. Amen.
Amen. All Amen. Right. Thank you, Barbara and Jerry. Give me a hand. Thank you, guys. That's great teaching. Good stuff. So we got a little bit left. Is that right, Jerry? Or that was, we went to the last verse? Okay. We made it all the way through John 14. Okay. We're good. We're good. We'll go start on 15 next week. All right. So there's no, yeah, there won't be a part one. Okay. So if you're watching this in video um, in the future, <laughs> we want to invite you to go to uh, deliverancerevolution.org. Uh, click the link that says contact us and uh, communicate with us. I'll respond to you. You can ask Jerry and Barbara questions. I'll send you information about how to connect with us and join this group, our daily group at 11 a.m. Eastern time. There's also a link on the website that says prayers. Click it. You have some very powerful prayers. Uh, we'll be glad to help you with salvation, who Jesus is, deliverance, healing, baptism, communion, anything to bring you closer to the kingdom of Jesus Christ. We love you. We're praying for you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks, we love you, and bye-bye. They talk about Jesus and the good things he's done. Flaming wide these gates, let's see his kingdom come.